Hey guys, this is Neon, this is Clownfish Gaming, and this is some gaming news on Clownfish Gaming. And the biggest news now in video games, uh, the biggest news this week is that SAG-AFTRA, which is the union, the Hollywood union that uh, represents uh, many, many voice actors in video games and cartoons, uh, they signed a deal with an AI voice replication company and apparently they're going to license out people's voices. Now, you have to give consent, of course, but a lot of voice actors said they did not uh, get the memo. They didn't get the memo. They did not get to vote on this. This is one of the big concerns they had during the strikes of the summer was AI replacing them. And let's be honest, it's going to be very easy to replace a lot of actors in video games, especially if you have a very popular actor who has uh, lent their voice who has consented to having their voice duplicated, you know, it's going to be hard to compete with that when you've got the same voice actors uh, living on digitally forever and ever and ever and ever, potentially, you know. But I guess maybe, you know, from sag aftras point of view, they had to make that deal because if they didn't make that deal, it was either, you know, join them or get obliterated. Uh, because here's the thing, video game companies in particular are very keen to implement AI into games, especially AAA titles, you know, having uh, more interactive, uh, lively conversations with NPCs that can maybe be generated on the fly. And they're going to do it with or without SAG-AFTRA. You know, at least this way, voice actors, I guess, have a way to get paid. But again, the downside to this is, you know, if if 10 or 20 voice actors give their consent to have their voices used in games and those 10 or 20 actors are uh, cheaper to basically, you know, license their, their voice likeness than it is to bring in another actor, then why do you need to hire other actors? You know, nobody will ever leave a role. Uh, theoretically, you could have somebody like Peter Cullen who plays Optimus Prime being Optimus Prime forever. In this company, they actually did that with Darth Vader. They bought James Earl Jones' voice effectively and you know he will live on as darth vader forever and that could happen with other roles too uh, you know so it, i understand where these actors are coming from because you know their union basically did just sign their death certificate i think in a lot of cases and but again if they didn't cut a deal now they would have gotten kicked to the curb down the road so let's talk about this before we get into it any further please give us a sub give us a follow give us a like wherever you find us I go out to clownfishgaming.net for more gaming news and gameplay videos uh, this come from vg247 voice actors were blindsided by sag after deal with ai company a major development in the ongoing ai debate and not and not a popular one at that a deal was announced to the world between American Actors Union SAG after an AI voice actor company, Replica Studios. Again, that's that's the one that uh, replicated James Earl Jones' voice, if I recall correctly. Uh, late last night, late last night, late last night at CES, the deal would allow willing voice actors to sign AI voice agreements for future video game projects. This announcement has gone down poorly with many of those firmly against AI voiceover work of any kind. Uh, details of these voice agreement contracts can be found on the sag After website. Uh, of course, their representative said it was uh, fair ethical treatment. And, you know, I guess the alternative is that you get cut out of it completely and they just use uh, a voice that sounds like yours. I don't know. This agreement is clearly sag After trying to snatch some degree of power in AI's use in game development for their represented artists rather than standing against the practice of AI. Um... So yes and no, I think uh, part of it personally, and I've talked about this on the Clownfish uh, TV channel, is I think that SAG after they get a cut, you know? So if they've got their actors cutting deals with studios, game studios or animation studios or whatever, and they get royalties every time that actor's, you know, uh, performance is used, SAG after gets money from that too. Again, the alternative is they're gonna do it with or without you. You know, and they still may eventually. They may say, hey, it's cheaper for us just to generate voices whole cloth using an amalgamation of, you know, because I mean, you can replicate any kind of voice, really. You know, the technology is, is going to be there where you can replicate any kind of voice and it's not going to sound like any particular actor. They can get very close to an actor, but it's not actually that actor's stuff. So they don't have to 
pay them. It's not their voice. You don't have to pay them. And I think that's where we're, where we're going, and especially with video games. Uh, video games, I think there's a lot more room for that sort of thing than in movies or animation. But imagine if you could basically lease Chris Pratt's voice. Like, Robo Chris Pratt could voice everything. He could be Sonic the Hedgehog and Mario. You know, whoever's, whoever's willing to pay the licensing fee for the Chris Pratt bot. Uh, in the same way that they thought they could replace teachers, are they really going to be able to replace a performance? I don't think so. Um, but that doesn't mean they won't find ways to train audiences to accept less in certain circumstances. Yeah, that's it, because they're always going to maximize profit. What this voiceover agreement will do is assist in interested voice actors to replace an in-person performance with an AI one. It will assist in training audiences to accept AI performances through the use of sanctioned contracts, and they will allow developers to profit off of AI work. Uh, the agreement does place some degree of power, some degree, in the hands of voice actors comfortable with licensing their voices out. Like, yeah, you know, James Earl Jones is, what, 90-some years old? He can't do Darth Vader anymore, and he's not going to be here much longer. So, you know, in, the, in that case, he can, you know, have his his family benefit from the use of his voice, you know, for years to come. And I'd rather have, I mean, if Disney is hell-bent on making more Star Wars, and I don't think they should, but if, if they're hell-bent on making more Star Wars and using Darth Vader, I'd rather have it be James Earl Jones because I've heard sound-alikes and they don't sound like James Earl Jones. I've heard other people do Vader in video games and it does not sound like Darth Vader. So they said, yeah, the voice agreement has not been made public. We can't be sure how much payoff these actors are actually going to get. Do they get residuals? Yeah, that's what I think. But here's, here's the thing. Uh, actors were blindsided by it. They, they were supposedly, uh, supposedly sag after was supposed to vote on this. And as I understand it, uh, many, many voice actors were not even aware of this was a thing because part of the reason they went on strike was to avoid this very scenario and their union threw them under the bus. <laughs> you know? The announcement has seemingly gone down badly among both video game consumers and voiceover artists alike. Steve Bloom, a legendary voice behind Baraka and Spike Spiegel, Wolverine and Moore, expressed on Twitter he was blindsided by the, the decision. Excuse me, with all due respect, you state in the article approved by affected members of the union's voiceover performer, uh, performer community. Nobody in our community approved this that I know of. Games are the bulk of my livelihood and have been for years. Who are you referring to? Uh, Melissa Medina? Uh, transparency. No one was told about replica. Informed consent to know what this agreement entails and whether it considers the technological abilities of AI control, able to remove our voices from platform and from the AI model itself. Uh, I don't know. So here, here's the thing. There's a lot of controversy uh, right now with artists being used to train Midjourney and other, you know, AI art tools without their consent. So. You know, I mean, I think they have legitimate concerns. Do I think that there's been a lot of fear mongering about AI? Yeah. Do I think it's going away? No, it's not going away. Do I think it's going to eliminate a lot of jobs? Unfortunately, yes. It's going to be a lot easier to, you know, type in some prompts, generate some text, and then have uh, the NPC speak, you know, in, in a voice using a, a chat bot, basically that may or may not sound like an existing actor. But a lot of a lot of actors are not happy with this. Um, you know, and you thought the Bayonetta controversy was a big deal. The voice actress of Bayonetta, you thought that was a big deal? This is gonna end a lot of careers. Even if you support AI use with consenting actors, this article says, again, uh, VG247.com, this is a bad look for sag After. Absolutely. Sprung out of nowhere, a community that was Keen to strike in opposition has woken up to their own union, literally shaking hands with AI companies. Told you so. We told you so. This is this is what unions are like. I hate to say it, but this is what they do. Ultimately, you've got to wonder how many voice actors will opt to have their voices used. And yeah, there's talk of suing sag after. So who knows? Pretty interesting stuff, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe. We'll talk later.